In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Peace be with you. Amen. Archbishop Gregory, this is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad. Alleluia, alleluia. Alleluia, alleluia. On behalf of the staff, parishioners, and all gathered here this morning, I want you to know what a joyful occasion this is. Today, we welcome you to your cathedral. This church is the location of your chair, your cathedra, the great symbol of your role as our shepherd, the leader, the teacher, the healer, and the one who models holiness for us. Today, we offer you our support and our untiring assistance in your ministry. Today begins a new chapter in the history of St. Matthew's. Since the beginning of this new century, we have undertaken a major restoration, a renovation, some new construction, 
in the completion of our great organ. The Washington Post has said, St. Matthew's is a real jewel. However, Archbishop, the real jewel here at St. Matthew's is the parish community. It is the people. We are far more than just a building. And so today I present to you a vibrant faith community. Together with you as our shepherd, we will continue to build the city of God. And as you said in your homily at your installation, quoting Pope Francis, together we will leave our comfortable confines to encounter and welcome the poor, the marginalized, the neglected, and to place them at the very heart of Christ's church. Archbishop, please join us often. This is your home, and you are always welcome. Archbishop Gregory Ad Motos Annus. Thank you. Monsignor, thank you from the heart. Thank you to all who are here to celebrate this Eucharist on this Sunday here in Washington. Thank you in a special way to any visitors and travelers. Archbishop Palmer Buckles, the Archbishop of Cape Town in Ghana. I think he's traveled the farthest. <laughs> We gather as God's sons and daughters. We know he loves us. He asks us to acknowledge our sin and to receive his forgiveness. Lord Jesus, you raise us to new life. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you forgive us our sins. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you feed us with your body and blood. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life.
Almighty God, that we may celebrate with heartfelt devotion these days of joy, which we keep in honor of the risen Lord, and that what we relive in remembrance we may also hold to in what we do. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. Some who had come down from Judea were instructing the brothers, unless you are circumcised according to the Mosaic practice, you cannot be saved. Because there arose no little dissension and debate by Paul and Barnabas with them, it was decided that Paul, Barnabas, and some of the others should go up to Jerusalem to the apostles and elders about this question. The apostles and elders, in agreement with the whole church, decided to choose representatives and to send them to Antioch with Paul and Barnabas. The ones chosen were Judas, who was called Barsabbas, and Silas, leaders among the brothers. This is the letter delivered by them. The apostles and the elders, your brothers, to the brothers in Antioch, Syria, and Cilicia, of Gentile origin, greetings. Since we have heard that some of our number who went out without any mandate from us have upset you with their teachings and disturbed your peace of mind, we have with one accord decided to choose representatives and to send them to you along with our beloved Paul and Barnabas who have dedicated their lives to the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. So we are sending Judas and Silas who will also convey the same message by word of mouth. It is the decision of the Holy Spirit and of us not to place on you any burden beyond these necessities, namely, to abstain from meat sacrificed to idols, from blood, from meats of strangled animals, and from unlawful marriage. If you keep free of these, you will be doing what is right. Farewell. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
Lectura del libro del Apocalipsis. Un ángel me transportó en espíritu a una montaña elevada y me mostró a Jerusalén, la ciudad santa, que descendía del cielo, resplandeciente con la gloria de Dios. Su fulgor era semejante al de una piedra preciosa, como el de un diamante cristalino. Tenía una muralla ancha y elevada, con doce puertas monumentales y sobre ellas doce ángeles y doce nombres escritos, los nombres de las doce tribus de Israel. Tres de estas puertas daban al oriente, tres al norte, tres al sur y tres al poniente. La muralla descansaba sobre doce cimientos en los que estaban escritos los doce nombres de los apóstoles del Cordero. No vi ningún templo en la ciudad porque el Señor Dios Todopoderoso y el Cordero son el templo. No necesita la luz del sol, o, del sol o de la luna, porque la gloria de Dios la ilumina y el Cordero es su lumbrera. Palabra de Dios. Te alabamos. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said to his disciples, whoever loves me will keep my word, and my Father will love him, and we will come to him and make our dwelling with him. Whoever does not love me does not keep my words, yet the word you hear is not mine, but that of the Father who sent me. 
I have told you this while I am with you. The Advocate, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, will teach you everything and remind you of all that I told you. Peace I leave with you, my peace I give to you. Not as the world gives do I give it to you. Do not let your hearts be troubled or afraid. You heard me tell you, I am going away and I will come back to you. Do not let your hearts be troubled or afraid. If you loved me, you would rejoice that I am going to the Father, for the Father is greater than I. And now, I have told you this before it happens, so that when it happens, you may believe. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. My beloved brothers and sisters in Christ. Hellos always seem so much easier than goodbyes. Today, as I continue my introduction and hello to the Archdiocese of Washington, following my less than subtle knock on the cathedral door, we have just listened to the words of the Lord Jesus, who was in the midst of saying farewell to his disciples. It was an obviously poignant time for him, as well as for them. Jesus had grown to love those first disciples as his friends, and they had come to love him, even with their less than perfect fidelity. His departure from them to return to the right hand of his father held some sorrow at that moment for Jesus, and it undoubtedly introduced fear on the part of his friends. On the contrary, this is a very happy moment for me as I begin my service to you as your new Archbishop. There is excitement in this moment for me, and I pray a spirit of hope for all of you. But there is also a realistic sense as well. We are beginning something new. We are establishing a new friendship and a new relationship that we all pray will be fruitful and filled with joy. Together, we will face our future and we will pray this morning that it will indeed be a future blessed by God himself. Nonetheless, 
Jesus' admonition to those worried disciples, he speaks to you and to me as well. Do not let your hearts be troubled or afraid. The Christ had a gift in store for them as well as for us that would be the source of enduring courage and comfort. The Advocate, God's own Holy Spirit. Today, we in the Archdiocese of Washington especially need the Pentecost gift that turned frightened and disillusioned disciples into bold witnesses. As Jesus prepared to take leave of his disciples, he already knew where he was going, back to his father. On the other hand, those first disciples were far less certain regarding what might happen to them. They were frightened to consider their future, which at first led them to sequester themselves in that upper room until the Holy Spirit came to bestow on them the gifts of courage and boldness to encounter the world with the gospel of Christ, we find ourselves in a similar situation all too frequently. The Lord's departure unsettled those first disciples, and at times we also may feel abandoned. It is during those moments when we most need the Holy Spirit. The Advocate promised to the first disciples and to all those who have become disciples since. As we approach Pentecost, we all need to be reminded of the Lord's promise to send us the help that we need to face the challenges that will lie ahead. Perhaps the ministry most identified with any bishop is the bestowal of the Holy Spirit in the sacrament of confirmation. In a sense, I hope to confirm you in that same spirit once again and to rediscover that very same spirit in my own life. As I knocked on the door of St. Matthew's Cathedral, I sought, to en I sought entry not into a building, but into the lives of the people of this local church. I pray that you will let me in so that together we can strengthen one another, encourage one another, and together Wait in hope for the return of the one we seek most of all. God bless you. I'm glad you opened the door. Amen. My dearest brothers and sisters in Christ, through the Paschal Mystery, 
we have been buried with Christ in baptism so that we may walk with him in newness of life. And so let us renew the promises of holy baptism by which we renounced Satan and his works and promised to serve God in the Holy Catholic Church. And so now I ask you, do you renounce Satan and all his works and all his empty show? Do you believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth? Do you believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was born of the Virgin Mary, suffered death and was buried, rose again from the dead, and is seated at the right hand of the Father? Do you believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting? And may Almighty God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has given us new birth by water and the Holy Spirit, and bestowed on us forgiveness of our sins, keep us by his grace in Christ Jesus our Lord for eternal life. Amen. Amen. Springs of water, bless the Lord. Springs of water, bless the Lord. Give thanks to the Lord, for he Beloved, 
Turning now to our Heavenly Father, let us bring to him with confidence our needs and petitions. For all those who lead the church, for Pope Francis in his worldwide mission to preach and to be the face of God's mercy, and for Archbishop Gregory as he begins to shepherd this local church with wisdom, integrity, and loving care. Let us pray to the Lord. Por el fin de la guerra y la opresión en todo el mundo, especialmente en Yemen, Siria y Afganistán, por una resolución pacífica de las tensiones en Venezuela y en el Medio Oriente y por todos los que trabajan para lograr la reconciliación donde hay conflictos, por una respuesta humana y compasiva a la situación de los refugiados en todo el mundo. Let us pray to the Lord. For the newly baptized and all who receive the light of Christ this Easter time, as they continue to enter more deeply into the mystery of faith, hope, and charity. Let us pray to the Lord. Por todos los enfermos que han pedido por nuestras oraciones, por aquellos que visitan y consuelos, consuelan a los que están en los hospitales y en, las, y en los hogares de ancianos, y por aquellos que se esfuerzan por ser buen ejemplo para sus familias. Let us pray to the Lord. Father, you know our needs before we even speak them, and you always hear our prayers. Listen to us now as we implore your help and answer us according to your will. We ask this through Christ our Lord.
Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice of your hands. The grace of the Lord is in the name of all the May our prayers rise up to you, O Lord, together with the sacrificial offerings, so that purified by your graciousness, we may be conformed to the mysteries of your mighty love through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, at all times to acclaim you, O Lord. But in this time above all, to laud you yet more gloriously, when Christ our Passover has been sacrificed. Through him the children of light rise to eternal life, and the halls of the heavenly kingdom are thrown open to the faithful. For his death is our ransom from death, and in his rising the life of all has risen. Therefore, overcome with paschal joy, every land, every people exalts in your praise, and even the heavenly powers with the angelic host sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim. Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, 
and giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When we meet this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until. As we celebrate this, the, the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church, and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself. Grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, St. Matthew, and with all the saints on, on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May the sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth with your servant, Francis, our Pope, Wilton, our Bishop, the Order of Bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you in your compassion, O merciful Father. Gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him, and with him, and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever. command and formed by divine teaching we dare to say our father Deliver us from evil. 
Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us offer each other a sign of peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb.
Let us pray. Almighty, ever-living God, who restore us to eternal life and the resurrection of Christ, increase in us, we pray, the fruits of this Paschal Sacrament, and pour into our hearts the strength of this saving food. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Bow down for the blessing. May God, who by the resurrection of his only begotten Son, was pleased to confer on you the gift of redemption and of adoption, give you gladness by his blessing. Amen. May he, by whose redeeming work you have received the gift of everlasting freedom, make you heirs to an eternal inheritance. Amen. And may you, who have already risen with Christ in baptism through faith, by living in a right manner on this earth, be united with him in the homeland of heaven. Amen. And may the blessing of Almighty God, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit come down on you and remain with you forever. Amen. Go and proclaim the gospel of the Lord. Thanks be to God.